Hey, what is up everyone? In this video, I wanna share with you how I found and then patched myself a CVE, specifically CVE 2024-23724, which is stored cross-site scripting in the Ghost CMS platform. What I wanna do in this video is walk you through this blog post, really disclosure that I wrote, and provide a little more additional details about how I found it and about how I eventually patched it. So let's go ahead and dive in. Here is the CVE, but this is a unique one. Now, if you've never heard of Go CMS, Go CMS, as you can tell by the name, is a content management system or platform. It's used for blogs, websites, content creation, publishing posts, and it's used by a bunch of major brands. It's used by Mozilla, it's used by Apple, it's used by OpenAI, just to name a few of them. Now, I found this stored cross-site scripting by uploading a malicious profile image, which we will get to that, but the gist of it is there's five different roles in Go CMS. There are contributors, which is the lowest privilege role. A contributor can log in and write posts, but they cannot publish. You have authors who can create and publish new posts and tags. You have editors who can invite, manage, and edit authors and contributors. You have administrators who have full permissions to edit all data and settings. And finally, you have owners, which is an admin who cannot be deleted and who has access to billing details. Now, there can only be one owner in a Go CMS instance. There can be a bunch of admins, but only one of the admin is an owner. Now, what this exploit allows you to do is if you compromise a user with a contributor role, once again, the lowest privilege role can't even publish posts, but every role has the ability to upload a profile image. And if you upload this profile image as a contributor and you get an owner to go directly to this profile image, this SVG file that we're gonna be talking about, what will happen in that moment without the admin noticing is it will make our contributor user an admin and then it will pass owner role to our admin user, therefore taking over full control of the Go CMS instance because the admin cannot be deleted and we also have access to some of the billing details. You can easily upload a profile image. You can see it right here. It's just your standard profile image. But what is unique about this is embedding cross-site scripting payloads in SVGs. Now, if you're new to what an SVG is, generally when it comes to an image or a profile picture, you see things like PNGs or JPEGs. SVGs are another image format, but what's unique about them is they are XML-based and they may include JavaScript, which can execute in the victim's browser. This is a pretty typical POC right here. You can see what it's doing. We have some image information right here, but we're also embedding JavaScript in the SVG. So look at it right here. We have script tags and we're just doing alert document domain, a very simple POC. When a user navigates to the uploaded image, you can see that JavaScript executes in their browser. But okay, that's cool. That is cross-site scripting. But the question is, can we weaponize the cross-site scripting? And yes, we can. And that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to see, okay, our low privilege contributor can execute JavaScript what can they do at the most? Well, what they can do is I eventually, after a lot of uh, frustration and thinking through stuff, I eventually create an SVG file that does this when the admin or when the owner views it. It adds the administrator role to our user and then it transfers the owner role to our now administrator user. Now to craft that malicious SVG, we need a few pieces of information. All of these are pretty simple except for this. The admin role ID is randomly updated per Go CMS instance, but as I was navigating on the website, I realized every authenticated user can make this get request and it returns all the role details and every user in the Go CMS tenant, including the admin role ID that we need for this attack. With that information, I created a SVG and I'll show you what this looks like. It was actually quite difficult to create this. I, I think I might need to download it to my computer. Here it is. So here is the file right here. You can see what we're doing with this SVG file is we're running JavaScript, of course. I'll try to zoom in a little bit for you. And our first JavaScript is adding our contributor role. You can see it's getting the user ID, username, slug name. That's all the information you need to enter. But it's adding our contributor role as an administrator to the admin group. Once it's an admin, it's making a second request that's transferring ownership to our user ID. But as you can see, looking at this, not intuitive, not easy to follow. And even as the one who created it, I kept messing up the syntax and forgetting what goes where. So then once I had that done, I ended up creating a Python script. You can actually access the Python script here in the CVE folder. 
Super easy to use. Python 3, the CVE, and then username, password, and then the target URL. And you can actually see me doing it right here, right? Python 3, executing it with the attacker's username, the attacker's password, and then the target URL. And the Python script will dynamically find all the data that you need and then spit out the malicious SVG that you need to upload. What this GIF shows, is going to show the full attack. We'll let it restart. Here's our administrator, right? They're the admin. And now they're going to navigate to the malicious SVG uploaded by our attacker user. And note, they don't see anything, right? Blank screen, but watch them refresh this page. Immediately, our contributor user is now the owner of the Go CMS instance, demonstrating full takeover. Now, what is unique about this CVE is that the vendor does not see it as a valid vector. Specifically, here's what they said. All Go CMS staff users are expected to be trusted. And they elaborate on the security page, a basic feature of Ghost as a CMS is to allow content creators to make use of scripts, SVGs, embedded content, and other file uploads that are required for the content to display as intended. Because of this, there will always be the possibility of XSS attacks, albeit only from users that have been trusted to build the site's content. Now, what I responded to this is there's other people who have reported cross-site scripting in like post, which isn't a valid attack vector, at least in my opinion. Go CMS is made for publishing blog posts, website design, JavaScript is part of that. But what I think makes this CVE unique is I'm doing this as a contributor who, if you remember right, doesn't even have permission to publish their own post. So they can't actually contribute to the site's content unless it's approved. What this does is puts the JavaScript not in a post that has nothing to do with designing the website, but rather in a malicious profile image, which can then be used to attack other users, including the owner. But since it's open source and I encourage others to contribute to the code base on GitHub, I literally did a code review and patched my own CVE. So I found the vulnerable code right here. It's the middleware, and if you know no JS, you know how middleware functions, but it's a middleware that processes the uploading of files. And when you look at that, there's nothing sanitizing SVG files. So I did a lot of Googling on no JS and sanitizing, and I discovered something called Dom Purify. Now what Dom Purify does, as it removes dangerous content that could be used in cross-site scripting attacks, but it tries to keep the HTML or the image as close to the original input as possible, maintaining functionality and appearance without compromising the security. And here's what it looks like. If you pull this patch down, this pull request, it's still an open pull request, not even a proof, but if you pull this patch down before you patch it and you upload the SVG that executes JavaScript, this is what it will look like. You can see it includes our script tags. Well, once I patched it with Dom Purify, you can see that if you try to upload it, it still retains the image characteristics right here. So it still has the image characteristics, so it's not breaking any images, but you can see it stripped out the JavaScript in the post effectively patching my own CVE and really patching cross-site scripting across the board, at least when it comes to SVG files being uploaded. Here is my disclosure timeline. I just want to point this out to you because so you can understand how these CVEs work. It's not immediate. So here it is. I first reported the issue on December 8th. On December 11th, Go CMS said it's not a valid vector. I responded right away, providing more information, kind of like I just did now about the profile image and the difference that I see and how it can be used by an attacker with a full POC. And they didn't get back to me. So I followed up again on January 2nd saying, hey, uh, can I get an update on this? They responded two days later saying, nope, same thing. All staff users are expected, so it's not a valid vector. I submitted to MITRE anyways with the information about the vulnerability as well as the reply from Go that they don't see it as a valid vector from their end. Well, see, uh, MITRE still assigned the CVE. And generally, we don't like to release unpatched vulnerabilities. So I did a code review. I submitted a pull request to patch the CVE myself, and then finally publicly disclose the CVE on February 13th. Now I do want to show you, if I can zoom out a little bit, I want to show you my pull request and maybe walk you through this patch because this is the first, honestly, patching it was more difficult for me than finding the vulnerability. So here is my pull request, just walking through exactly what I said. And we're making two files. We're integrating Dom Purify and the update.js middleware that I showed you just a little bit ago. And then we're also updating package.json because it's the dependency of Dom Purify and adding that. You can go ahead and look at the commits or the files change if you want to see it for yourself. But very quickly, in our upload.js, you can see some changes right here. We're just adding those libraries so we're able to use Dom Purify. And then what we eventually do is Dom Purify, really we could remove the file if it's malicious, but I didn't want to do that. So instead I adjusted it so that it accepts it when it's sanitized. So even if the 
SVG file is malicious, it doesn't kick it out right away because I don't want to break things on accident. Instead, it will just sanitize it and keep the SVG, keep all the image characteristics while removing any possible cross-site scripting. And then finally, the package.json is just the dependencies right here that we need installed in order to make this happen. So that is how I eventually found a CVE patch the CVE myself after performing a static code review and then open a pull request to help the developer. Because here's the thing, a lot of people will find CVEs in open source software, but the reality is open source software is maintained by people who maybe aren't paid a whole lot. Maybe it's a side gig. Maybe they're completely volunteers and they don't have the time to fix your thousands of CVEs that you found, although they want to. So if you find a CVE in open source software, I would encourage you take it a step further, do a static code review, put yourself in the feet of a developer in the seat of a developer do a static code review find the vulnerable code and patch this cve yourself it will give you um a glimpse into what it's like to be patching security vulnerabilities but it'll also make you a better hacker in the long haul because you'll see the kind of things that you're looking for and if you're a pen tester it gives you more ability to speak to a client saying hey here's how i actually patched this before in an open source software i would encourage you to patch it this way because it worked for me and gives you a little more expert advice you're able to give from so i hope you found this helpful for those of you hunting cvs i want to say happy hunting and happy hacking